Hello, my wonderful shiny gems. How's it going? I hope you're all doing well today. Today we will be discussing some variables in depth. Now, this is not a video on what a variable is or um, how to implement it into Mushy. This is a video on, and if you want those videos, check the right hand corner. They're, they should be popping up any moment. Um, there's two of them, uh, but yeah, check them out. Uh, this video is on why you would use a variable in, in any, for any reason. Okay. So this is going to be mostly me kind of talking and showing you what I use. Um, so in the, on, on, on one of the sides here, you should see a list of the reasons what some of the reasons why I use them. Not a full list of why everybody uses them, but some of the reasons I do. The main reasons I use them is character reputation to factions that I have, uh, quest tracker and quest completed tracking, and um, if we're doing local variables, I mostly use those for shops after a quest is completed and you can talk to somebody and they can give you something and that's a little different than the profession merchants because the professional merchants um which again in the right hand corner if you want to check those out uh are a little different and um don't allow you to use them after uh, a quest you can't do a quest and then have them as a profession professional merchant for that player so in order to kind of adjust for that and fix that that's what I do for um, local variables um, also global events and uh, monthly events and so on and so forth for that so first let's get into the mushy editor okay we are in a blank mushy character um, that's being if you will we're going to show you the different variables I use so when I'm gonna load up a quest system for mine I am not sharing this uh, in the stuff that you can see in the bottom mostly because they're mine and they're very incomplete okay very very incomplete but it will show you a few of the things that we're going that we're I'm talking about okay so the first and foremost question is why use a variable instead of a quest? So, um, and, and there's several reasons. Obviously, you don't want to hand them a quest and um, all the time for one. And but I mean, you got a quest. Why why would you need a character variable? Well, in my case, it's because I have different stages for. Um, my character, uh, my thespian, I named Draco. And in order to sort of combat the continuous problems I was having, I used a character variable, which is rep for me, okay? Um, in this case, I would say it was equals um, because I loaded it up. It uh, kind of didn't put it together properly, but that's okay. But anyways, instead of putting does do they have the quest, have they completed the quest, da 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 all the way, and that's like double what I have here. Instead, I have um, a character variable called the Dragon Clan, which is a reputation, and I say one, two, three, all the way until the next one. All right, now. In order to do that, you go. It, we'll we'll start at one, where if it's false, you go to seven, which is this system here. Now, if um, I give them the quest, and I give them, and I add the the character condition, all right, and then it continues to the second 
one here, which, ew, stuff it please, um, which goes to 16, which is here, and then it completes the quest, and then gives them another character uh, operation, and it adds an additional value. And then it continues to say thank you, and it um, sends them a private message saying what they got to complete it, and then it jumps back to 26. 26 goes here because I want them wanted to go back through here, and, um, and then it goes to 53, which it kind of follows through questions and whatnot, and then gives them another quest. All right. Now, what I didn't do in this one, which I will be adding eventually to, is that at the end of every quest where it says quest completed, aside from this character variable for reputation, I will be adding a um, another character variable called completed quest. Okay. This um, this will allow me to keep track of how many quests they completed. And you do that for all your quests. So that includes um, your daily quests, your monthly quests, and so so forth. All right. That that includes all your quests. So if if you have a group of people, just kind of lay down the rules of how you want your system to be set up. And oh yeah, I want you also guys to also have this variable and say okay at the end of every quest that's completed, you tick it up. Okay. That is what most of the character variables I use for. Now, um, a, a viewer a while back suggested I use cookies. Uh, so we're going to use cookies as an example uh, for local variables. So you can always look up uh, your global and local variables. Now, um, we'll, we're going to go with local uh, global first because they're a little bit easier to talk about. Now, in my servers, I have a room, quote unquote, in the uh, marketplace that only I have access to, or my admins only have access to. I'm the only admin, so <laughs> shrug, <laughs> a shrug on that. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, so it's a room that I only have access to used in egress store and done that and that way I have access to a thespian that is just set down for me to look up look global variables now of course this is a playthrough a new single player playthrough so you don't see any of the global variables here but um, what I would normally do is uh, for like a monthly event or even a uh, weekly event. Say you have four, you, you generally have four weeks in a month. <laughs> um, and each week you have a different event or you turn off certain um, thespians and other thespians are active a different week. And thus giving you different quests and kind of makes it a little more dynamic. All right. So in order to do that, you would have... Um, you would have these condition nodes uh, kind of similar to this setup, but you would have the thespian ask itself, is it a global variable? If the, the, the variable is called weekly, is weekly one or less, or is it equal to one or is it equal to two or is it, bet or is it, in or is it equal to um, two or less? something like that if it's a two-week event or something like that and you could do that with these global event global variables you can at, have the thespian ask it and then at whatever time you designate um, I would recommend if you do this that it's the same time and same day so like if it's a weekly thing you do it every Friday at 6 p.m. or something like that you go in to the marketplace into that little room where that thespian is go in look up global variables and you can do this with any thespian but it'd be easier if you just had a single thespian that you went to to do this for everything um it, and it's a lot easier trust me and less complicated but anyways you go in here because you can 
edit your global variable. Let's just uh, add a global variable, call it monthly um, or, or weekly, weekly. We'll, we'll name it weekly. Um, and we'll set it to zero for now. Uh, you can click on this variable and you can edit it and say it's week two. We'll say it's week two of the month. Okay, so anyone with the global variable of week two checking for that thespian, checking for a global variable week two has a quest, um, they'll do the quest. If it's a week three thespian, they'll say, um, go see this person. Um, I don't have time for you today. Go see this person type idea or something like that. I'm not very creative in that sense. I have my friends who are more creative than me that do that. <laughs> I just do the coding. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you can do that. You can do, um, weekend events where you have like, uh, uh, uh an arena, uh, arena, arena, wow, seriously, arena, um, zero, Create where um, say you want an arena event and you say it's going to be between Friday and Sunday of this specific time and you have everything set up but you what you could do is say it's closed until you activate it and it's just a binomial number so you uh, binomial oh, can't bolin number whatever you want to call it um, and right now it's set to zero you go in um, Friday at 6 a.m. you edit it and you activate it to one you hit save and the thespian that does the arena for Friday Saturday and Sunday will know that it's active and then just Sunday evening you turn it off you you just go back in edit it and go zero and save all right that's basically how and why I use global variables and character variables. All right. Now, um, for local variables there, I, I didn't really have a use for them for a very, very long time. Okay. I will admit that it took me a long time to realize they're actually useful. <laughs> um, local variables, especially if you want the same character, the same person who gave the person a quest, finished the quest, to ha allow them to purchase or um, purchase or just kind of give uh, random um, tidbits or something like that. Uh, yeah, local variables are useful. You can, uh, you can, whoa, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, you can go into the local variables. You can use a randomizer node and say, hey, uh, give uh, if, if this local variable is like two, because somebody already talked to him once, um, do this or something like that, or you can use it as a shop. You can say, okay, he had a little mini quest and now he's, he likes you and whatnot. He likes the player. And now you can create a shop for that. And you would use local variables to say how much he has in stock of bows, cookies, we love cookies, tea, <laughs> um, weapons, what, whatever you want, armor, and do it that way. And then that way, um, the, 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 the limitations of the profession merchants also is the fact that they only use pippy gold. So this way, you can set up a shop all your own as well uh for for them and uh have it priced whatever you want it could be priced uh conan gold or aoc money or um uh hand them a broken thing you pay such and such and you get a new one for basically a new one but basically what they do is take it and then hand you a full one um that's just kind of how it goes in here uh a, a full item so like if you ask them to repair the axe that i have on me and what they'll do is they'll take that axe and then hand you the axe back um there's a little finicky stuff you got to make sure they have the item you gotta um 
then maybe have a couple of weight nodes so that way it can feel like um, there's been time that's passed and then hand it to them. So like maybe 10 seconds or something like that. I wouldn't have it much longer than 10 seconds. Nobody's that patient. Um, <laughs> I hate to tell you that many, many, many people aren't that patient. Um, so there's several th ways to use local variables i like it because it seems like they might be out of stock or uh something like that but there's always a way to get the stock kind of back up kind of on its own um at least for me i don't have i lost my mushy script for this so i am going to have to make a whole new one um but at least it's going to be faster this time around when i make it um but i have a every time they uh, buy something or I, I kind of like subtract it from a local variable. I subtract it from a local variable. The local variable has a set number. It subtracts it from that number. But it, if a person like chooses a specific option, like, oh, that's not enough money. I say, okay, tick one up instead or something like that. Uh, it's not... That way it just doesn't lose it all. Uh, if the person hits back, then of course it's not gonna be in stock and stuff. Um, and the easy way to check if it's in stock is have your thespian, make sure the condition node for that local variable is accurate. Is it more than zero? I wouldn't say, does it equal zero or whatnot? I would say, is it less? Well, yeah, you could say, is it equal zero? And it will work that way. And then if it's true, tell them, I'm sorry, I'm out of stock. And if it's false, go through all the shop stuff. It's kind of, it, it, this is kind of what, these are the ideas that people have of using variables. Now, um, I kind of explained it. I touched on it at the beginning of this video, but this video is not defining variables and what exactly um, how to use them. This is what could you use them for. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's uh, it they they can be used for so many so many nice and good things that um, it would be it would be remiss of me if I didn't explain I, some of the ideas that could be used for these variables. Now, really quickly for quests, quests act like a uh, character variable. So keep that in mind. If you're like wanting um, something to be a time limit, like, oh, they can't purchase this because they already purchased it. A great way to do that is add a quest to the end of that purchase and um, say and put a timer on it and then then if they have the quest uh, you, you would have to add another condition node for it though but if they have the quest say oh well it looks like you already purchased it from me so you can't purchase another one until a total of 24 hours has passed or something like that all right that is kind of like the neater things you can do with the quest. They act like a character variable, so it's only part of your character. And that way you can set up timers for stuff like that. All right? All right, guys. That is a look at variables in depth and how to use them. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget, stay shiny, and I'll see you guys all next time.